Kathy from Eclectic Images and thank you for joining us for another crafting session. So today we're doing the second one in our series of summer scenes on gloss card and I've chosen for this one to do a really bright sunset scene. Uh, Australia is a place of such differences. We have the cooler areas of Victoria and Tasmania in the snowfields right through to the desert areas in the centre and up to the blistering heat of Queensland and Northern Territory. So we can do a quite a, a summer encapsulate such a lot of different looks. Now, I don't know if Queensland ever actually gets sunsets this dramatic or maybe over in, I've heard the ones from Broome over in Western Australia are pretty stunning. So maybe I'm taking a bit of artistic license, but I think it looks fabulous to use all those great tropical colors. So this is what we're gonna make today. The stamps that we're using are eclectic ones. They're the palm tree, palm trees, the reeds and the uh, Sunset Kiss couple. The inks are mainly Catherine Pooler. So I'll be using, um, oh, am I using Midnight? No, I don't think I'm using Midnight. We're using Lemoncello, Orange Twist. So I've got a little bit out of the party collection, but then I'm going into the spa collection with Sangria and Queen for a Day. Normally you'd use either party collection or spa collection, but these colors just give such a richness that I really wanted to use them. Also a little bit of Blackjack Corral stamping and some Versamark for our embossing and I'll be applying the inks with a number 10 future brush. Now I find, particularly on gloss card, that these brushes just make your blending so much easier. You can get a variety of brush strokes with them, and, um, and you, but you still get, there's enough width to the brush that you get good coverage at the same time. So, let's have a play. Now I've already stamped the palm trees with the blackjack just to give it really plenty of drying time. Um, you do need to be a little bit careful when you're stamping on gloss card because it's a slippery surface to stamp onto. So either just be steady with your acrylic blocks or you can use a stamping platform or misty tool. So that's what I'm going to do for putting on the Sunset Kiss couple. So I've got that loaded into my platform. Now the stamp has, although the stamp is stained, you can see it's quite black, it's because I use it a lot with archival inks as well. So although it's stained, it's, it has been cleaned, which means it's nice and sticky, which has good things and bad things. It means when you're lining your stamp up on your card, it's gonna stick to the card. Even if you put the magnets on, it's gonna draw the card back up off your plate. So you actually have to peel it off and then pop your card back down where you had it. So for something like this where I'm stamping in the middle of the card, I can have my card pressed right up against those guidelines, which means if there's any movement, it's really easy to line it back up. Okay, so I'm going to ink up with my Versamark. Now, ink pads like your Versamark and your Midnight do appreciate being re-inked fairly regularly. So this one has just been re-inked. So we, not, we need a lot of ink on it because it's a solid stamp so we want to get really good coverage but without pressing hard I'm still just tapping on the stamp close our platform and press down now I've already got my embossing powder standing by ready so I want to make sure I've pressed over all of that design and particularly in the middle section with it being a solid stamp Okay, and of course it's probably going to grab, oh it didn't, oh how nice. I thought it was gonna grab the card on me again, but it was nice to me. All right, dip it into our embossing powder, shake the embossing powder over the whole lot, and then tap it down and a good couple of taps on the back. Get rid of any excess, and then I'm just gonna have a look, make sure I haven't got embossing powder where I don't want it. grains there that we don't want and one bit just in here but I've got really good coverage of the stamp so I'm very happy with that I know that I'm going to be doing white or leaving the card white behind the couple so I really want to make sure there's no extra grains of embossing there okay close our platform and move our embossing powder out of our zone where we're going to be doing heating. Now because I've got black embossing powder on the card and I want to have this area white behind it, 
I'm not going to be able to fake any little extra bits that fly anywhere. I'm not going to be able to fake it and say, oh, that's just insects in the grass or something. It's going to be really obvious. So I'm going to actually start my heating from behind the card so that we get the powder melting a bit onto the card before we start putting the heat directly onto it. This is going to be noisy, sorry. So we're just going to heat, and I'll turn that around so you can see, we're just heating behind the card. I often heat the front and the back of the card anyway because it just helps to stop the card from buckling. But if we just warm it up a little bit here, also means we're warming up the heat gun. Now I'll turn it over and it should start to take very quickly without any little grains of powder flying off anywhere. Beautiful. Just what we wanted. Let's give that a cool it down a bit and let's while we're doing that let's get our colors out so in order to do this sunset I wanted to use both a mask for the horizon and a mask for where the sunlight is going down um, you can use various sizes I went for a fairly large one on the sample card which is a bit more dramatic it doesn't leave as much area for coloring the sky Let's try it with a smaller one just to show a difference. So we'll use the smaller one. So I'm going to pop that behind them, making sure that there's going to be some that shows. And then I pop in my mask, which is just cut with a straight edge. And this is going to, I'm going to turn the card around because this is going to mask where the water line is. So I need to make sure that it tucks in at the bottom of the boat. I'm also going to look to see that I've got it fairly even so that my line is straight across. So I'm just looking to make sure that that edge is about the same as that edge and it looks like it. Now I can just hold all those down. This one is on a bit of a sticky note so it will hopefully stay in place for me. And we'll start off with our nice bright yellow limoncello ink pad and my yellow brush. Now I'm fairly fussy with my brushes to keep my yellow one just for yellow because if it gets contaminated, your colors become murkier on your card and also you could contaminate your ink pad. So I try and keep my yellow brushes just for yellow. I don't wash my brushes very often. Um, occasionally if they get contaminated or if they're starting to look really cloggy, I do, but mostly I just keep the same brushes for the same color families. Now the best way to apply is circles. Now, if I want a hard edge for the moon, I, or the, the setting sun, I can go right up to the edge of the mask. If I was wanting it a bit softer, I could use the mask as a guide, but actually not go right next to it. I'll take it off in a minute and show you what I mean so that makes sense. Let's get lots of beautiful yellow ink on there. Now, I'm only doing a small area at a time, and as well as applying it where I want it, I also, fade out all the edges of it so that it's lovely and soft and that makes it much easier to blend the next color in too so put it where you want it and then blend it out even when you're doing up the top here it can be a good idea to start at your scrap and then work around however once you've got some ink on the card, adding extra directly to that area, it has a little bit of slip from the previous ink, so it won't grab the card. We're working on gloss card, which gives us a bit of drying time for it. The inks don't dry too quickly, so we can blend them, but it will still dry. So if you get a blob on there, you can, it, you can have a hard time getting rid of it. Now I'm just gonna lift this mask out so you can see where I'm heading with the softness. So there we've got uh, the the setting sun behind them but the ink coming into it we haven't got a hard line like we have here either way is good we can either have the hard line or a softer line I'm going to put the mask back in place and keep working those colors I want a bit more richer yellow before we move on to the orange making sure that I'm blending out this edge as well so that we've got somewhere to blend the orange into. Now let's grab our orange twist, which is a great color. So 
So start a little bit further out than the yellow, blend it back onto the yellow and blend it out. You want that leading edge to be nice and soft as well. And see, I've just got a little bit too much into the yellow area. I'll just buff that back with my yellow brush. Just keep it nice and soft. I can blend more orange back into the yellow once I've got a bit less on my brush. Let's start working up this side as well. So soften those edges. If we're getting too much into our yellow, just buff over it a little bit with your yellow brush. If I buffed it with my orange brush, I'd be spreading more, more orange into it. Always cover more area than where you want that colour to be. And we've got, well, I've brought the orange in a little bit closer on that side, so I'm just going to bring it in a bit closer on this side as well. Okay, let's get into our sangria. This is where it starts to get really fun these rich dark colours. So pop it on where we want it and then blend it down into that orange. And again, if we're getting it too far, I pick up my orange brush and just blend it back a little bit. That's where you need to keep an eye on what brushes you've got next to you and maybe move your yellow one away from your bit so you don't accidentally pick that one up to blend it in with the sangria because that would definitely contaminate the brush. Now with the stamping on this one, we could actually create the whole card and then add the stamping in. I just put, and I normally would do that with the palm trees. I usually stamp the sunset couple first so I know where I'm working my scene around. But I usually leave the palm trees till last. Sometimes when you're doing a lot of blending over them, it can lift the ink off. Not so much with the Catherine Puller inks, definitely with the archivals, which do stamp well on the gloss card. But when you're doing a lot of working of the inks over the top, it can actually lift them back off the card a bit. So then I tend to do my stamping after I've done the colouring. But for the stamp, <laughs> getting tongue tied. For the um, for the for doing a tutorial like this, though, it just saves me time to not be heat setting and waiting for the ink to really dry before I can start the blending. So that's why I've snuck it in first. But yes, normally I'd put in the sunset couple create the scene and then start stamping in my palm trees. So I'm just looking as I'm going, looking at how far down the sangria has come on that side so I can pretty well match it to this side. And now we're going to switch to a purple brush and coin for a day. Actually, do we want just a bit more sangria just on the edges? Let's just, if we do the pouncing action, that will actually help to build up a bit more richness of colour. Again, have the orange brush standing by just to buff it back if I get a bit too much. Now, particularly with your pouncing, be careful. I haven't moved my card around. I'm changing the angle of my brush, but I've got to be very careful. If I keep going down this side like that, I'm going to end up stomping colour directly onto it and getting too much. So I've either got to shift my pad around or I've got to angle myself around so that, that brush stays with that sort of an action. So the main tip of the brush is going off the edge of the card and that way we don't get blobs of colour in the middle of our card. Now we do need to just buff that one a little bit. Okay, let's add in the queen for a day and get that dark purple happening. This is a fabulous colour. And I'm just going to add this one with the pouncing. So 
So put the colour first where you want it, then start to soften it out. As you've got less on the brush, let it work into the card a little bit. But if we've got too much, grab your Sangria brush and just buff it back a little bit. Don't ever try and do all the way around the card because this edge here will dry without being blended and you can't come back and blend it once it's dried. So just work a section until you're happy with it and then move on. Now if you find there's any little um, faults in the gloss card that means the ink hasn't taken as well or you get a little bit where it has grabbed the card, that's a perfect spot to then do some stamping over the top of it afterwards. And that's another reason why I often build my colour up and then put some of my stamping in so that I can actually <laughs> cover up any little spots that we don't want to see. I know, a little bit sneaky. Now I'm going to just move this around a little bit this way just so I'm working at a better angle for me but make sure that my mask is still in place. The Having the mask is a, of twofold uses. It means that I'm masking that horizon line but it also means I've given myself somewhere to hang on to the card because you don't want to be putting fingerprints all over it. If you're putting your hands directly on where you've already inked it can actually lift some of the ink off. If you're putting fingerprints where you haven't yet got to inking you can actually put marks in the card where the ink then won't take as well. So it's really good when you're hanging on to your card just to pop that little mask in there or a bit of paper towel or something to cover the card that you're not working just where your hands are. Okay, a little bit of buffing, and we're looking pretty good there. Okay, let's take our masks off and have a look at those colours. Oh, fab, isn't that wonderful? It's, they're so rich, it's wonderful. So now we're going to do the ocean part. Go back to our yellow. Now this is quite different how we're going to apply this. Instead of smooth circles, I'm actually going to be looking at creating water texture by letting it have some brush marks. But we have to be careful because I would like a highlight across the water. You can see the stamp almost leads you into it. I'd like a highlight from that setting sun to come across the water. Okay, so I've got it on, on, when you're working on gloss card, you can put some white back into it later with using a pigment ink, but I always find it shows. It can be good for misty type looks, but for something like this where we've got brights, to add white in would be quite obvious. So the best way to have white is to actually not color the card. So I've got to work out where I want that highlight across the water and not put any ink there. So let's have a go. And I'm going to try and work upside down so that you can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to mask and it's going to start, I can look at where the sun is setting, I think it's going to start around, so it'll probably go to that area. So with that in mind, put my mask back on and when you put your mask on this time, you actually, I'm going to hold it up for the camera, you actually want to see just a small amount of that colour there. If I can't see where I've already done my inking, I'll end up, when I take my mask off, I'll have a white edge across there. So let's make sure that we can just see a little bit of colour peeking through. Okay, let's get our lemon cello and our yellow brush. And I'm picturing where I want white and I'm just going to smudge the ink on. I can always come back and add a bit more ink if I've done too much white, but I'd actually prefer to have too much than too little. And I'm thinking I'm a bit rounded in shape there, so let's come across this way a little bit. Okay. It is actually easier applying it when you're not worrying about how well it's blending. However, we do still want to blend our colours in together. So I'll start off with some orange. And then I'm going to just flick bits of it into that yellow. 
Now, if I put pressure on the brush, it gives me more of a, a sharper edge. So I can do those, see how it's forming almost a line? Which is great where we want to have some texture. So put some pressure on your brush, which feels really weird. isn't it? <laughs> okay, let's get out and move my yellow brush well away and pick up the sangria. So pop some colour on and put some pressure on the brush. And again, if you're not happy, quickly grab your orange brush it back a little bit. You've got that little bit of time to change your, your blending. And I can just lift my mask up and have a look. And it looks like I actually brought the sangria in a lot further on that side, so I might have to match that to the sky. We'll have a look at that as a, as a whole piece of card in a moment. Just going to go back and forward with the brush a little bit. I'm just going to turn it round and put some pressure on the brush that way so I get a bit of a harder edge that way. I was getting too much colour because the soft edge of the brush is into the card. It was getting a little bit of smudgy colour coming on where I didn't want it. Now I'm just going to grab my orange brush and just smooth that out a bit more. There we go. This is because I'm working upside down. Pop your colour on, put a bit of pressure on your brush, sweep it in if it's coming in too far, get that orange brush and just smooth it back a bit. And I'm actually going to pounce a bit around the edges just to get that a little bit richer. Again, still with my orange brush standing by just to stop it coming in too far into the card. And now let's get some queen for a day happening as well. just pouncing. You can see when you first start to pounce you do pounce you do get some brush marks and then as you keep going over it that'll start to soften out. Come back in with my sangria. Just help that blending. This is such a rich colour it can be a bit overpowering if you're not careful. So I'm going to just be watching that blending. And there I put too much sangria, so I'm just going to smudge it out with my orange. On this one, I've stamped the palm tree and the sunset couple a bit lower because I wanted a bit more sky area, but it actually means I've then got less area to play with for the water. So we've got, um, I've got to be careful I don't put on too much colour and lose our moonlight across the water look. Previous brush, soften it out a bit. Use our orange just to soften that inner edge there. Cool. Okay, let's have a look and see how we're going. That's pretty good, except see I've got a little bit of sangria a bit too far in there compared with this. So without any more inking on the brush, I'm just going to hang on to this a bit. I'm just going to bring my sangria in. more on that side and 
come in with my orange and just soften that all out. And that should even that up, that waterline up a little bit. How fabulous is it? Love the bright colours. It just looks so good. As I said, a bit of, a bit of artistic licence there. It's not quite reality, but it's worth it because it just looks so good. Um, you could, with our water texture from the clouds, grass and water set, we could add a little bit of texture, more texture over there if we wanted to. Um, or we can let it dry and get let's let it let's let it dry and do our over stamping and see if we need some water texture in there. So because I'm going to want to do some embossing over this, I need to make sure this is really really dry, or our embossing powder is going to stick to all of that ink. So sorry, there's going to be a bit of heat gun noise for a moment as we dry. Now when you're drying, uh, do more movement to the brush to the air gun. When I'm embossing, I hold it fairly steady, but. Here, I want to dry the inks. I don't want to risk over embossing where we've already got some embossing on there. So let's just keep that moving till we get it nice and dry. It will dry quicker because we spread the inks out on the background. It will dry quicker than what it would if we had done stamping and the colour is more sort of pulled in areas. So it, your drying doesn't have to take too long. And now we're just going to be very good and use an anti-static pad to go over that, just so that we're not going to get embossing powder again where we don't want it. Cool, okay, let's get our big palm tree. Now this palm tree has been designed so that if you're doing a card that way around, it covers a fair bit of the card, but it's also, and you can also use just the fronds, but it can fit on a smaller card just by having some of it running off the edge of the card. And you'll notice on the other sample, I've done the palm trees the other way around. I just wanted to show you a different look. So let's ink up with our Versamark. You could also stamp in your, use your platform again because even with Versamark, it is going to be, we are stamping onto this slippery surface. Just making sure I'm getting to the ends of all those fronds. Now I'll position it where I think I want it. I want it running off the edge of the card at the bottom and some of the fronds going off the edge at the top. Place it down and then give a good press over the whole lot. I don't know, I think I say that with every stamp, but it does make a difference. I mean, we can, if we end up, because with any of our solid stamping and embossing, if we do end up with a few bits where it doesn't take, you can come back over with your Versamark pen and just fill those bits in. Okay, peel off. Get it into our embossing powder. Make sure we've covered all that tree. Tap it down. Tap it on the back. Now it has missed a little bit in the tree there, which on this sample I actually left a few bits like that because I felt it gave it a few nice little highlights. But a bit down there, not so happy with. So I'm going to come in with, I'll show you what to do with the Versamark pen in a moment to actually fix that up. So let's brush off any excess bits. If you're doing this at home, of course, once you've done your background colour, you can actually leave your card to sit around and work on another one and then come back to do your embossing so that you make sure that the background inks are really dry and then you don't have to spend so much time getting off little extra bits. Okay, let's quickly get this one heated. So you can see there's that spot down the bottom. I'm just going to grab my Versamark pen. I'm just using the bullet end. I'm just going to colour that bit in. And then we'll add some more embossing powder to it. We're almost out of time, so I don't think I will emboss the reeds on this one because you can see on the sample one how well that came, comes up. But we'll just add some extra to that spot and fix it up. Wonderful. 
Okay, so here's our two samples. Let's move all the, actually move them forward onto the nice tablecloth there rather than on my messy area. So you can see, so I will come in on this one and put some more reeds and things in, but you can see the effect you get of that by adding a little bit of extra foreground. You could certainly leave it just like that. Um, and by having this one embossed and this embossed, our other little tree definitely fades into the background. So it shows a couple of different looks with our moon and with the placement of our trees and some lovely hot tropical colours. Thank you very much for being with us and we'll do another couple in this series of working on gloss card with our Aussie summer scenes.